So what is the opposite of being in love? What is the opposite of being in love? I've talked for, probably said something in every homily so far that I've been here about being in love with God and being in love with our parish, with our religion, with other people, with truth, with goodness, with learning. I've talked a lot about being in love. Well, what's the opposite of being in love? We talk a lot about being in love, but we don't think about what the opposite is. The opposite of being in love is just drifting, just drifting through life. And in our gospel, Jesus tells us to learn. It's a command to his disciples. Learn the lesson of the fig tree. And what is the lesson of the fig tree then? The lesson of the fig tree is, you can see it's the blossom, the, the, the leaves are green. You know something's coming. There's no time left for just drifting. There's no time left for just drifting through life and through love. And so what does just drifting looks like if it's the opposite of being in love? Well, this is what it looks like. So what do I say? Well, you know, I don't really know that much of what to say. I tell you what, I say what everybody else says. I listen to what everybody else says. If I hear them saying it, that's what I say, because I'm just, I don't, I don't have something to say that comes from words that come from my interior. I can't speak from my feelings of my interior. So I just say what everybody else says. So I'm just drift, because I'm just drifting. Well, what do I think? Well, I'll tell you what I think. I, I, you know, I read the newspaper and I watch TV and I listen to the, uh, what's online. And I think what everybody else is thinking. If everybody else is thinking, well, then that's what I think. Because I don't have my own, I, I don't try to think with the fullness of the human heart and mind that God gave me because that is a lot of work. It's a lot of work to think. And to, I'll tell you what, I just think what everybody else thinks. Because I'm just drifting. What do I value in life? Well, I tell you what, I just, that's an easy one. I value what everybody else is valuing. I just look and see what everybody else thinks is important. I just see what they put as the priority, uh, how they stack up their values. And, and, and I, that's what I do because everybody else is doing that. That's what I do because I'm just drifting. And what do I do? What do I decide to do? Well, I do what everybody else is doing. I mean, it's pretty, I'm not charged up with my own energy to uh, make brave and loving decisions based on the fullness of my human thinking. And I just do what everybody else does. If they're doing it, that's what I do because I'm just drifting. And then our gospel, Jesus says that there is no time left for just drifting. So what does it look like to be in love? What does love look like? What does the real thing look like? We often, of course, in our, we're in a culture where we think so much about love as being feelings. And obviously, you know, when one is in love, there are a lot of feelings that go with it. But the trouble is the feelings can kind of go up and down. That's not what the love, those go with love, but that's not what love is. Love is the energy. Love is energy. It's not primarily feelings. It is energy. And people who are in love, you don't have to look very far. Look at a woman who's got a brand new baby and she's in love with that baby. And the thing that you can see about her, her feelings go up and down. When she hasn't had a full night's sleep for a year, you think her feelings are she wants to get up and take care of that kid? That's not what her feelings say. But what does her energy say? She's like a charged up little energizer bunny charged up to do good for that little child. And that's what love is. It is the energy to do good. It is when we are charged up with the energy to do good for somebody. You don't have to be a priest very long. Like Father Schwab has been, he's been at this much longer than I have, but you don't have to be a priest as long as he is to see lots of people come into your office and couples especially and tell you how much, you know, how much they love each other and they want to get married. And I'll tell you what, it doesn't take very long for you to be able to talk to that couple. And sometimes it's so obvious 
one of you is charged up with energy to do good for the other, but the other one is just drifting. They, have, they say all the right words, and they have a lot of feelings, but they're not the energy. They're not charged up to do good for you. They're just happy to let you do good for them. That's one person who's in love and another person who's just drifting through life, love. They're not charged up with the energy to do good. There's a very strange mystery about being alive, about this life that we have. We can feel it going in a direction. We can feel our life moving in a direction. But we also experience that it's a direction you can find or it's a direction that we can lose. And so I think we all know the experience of being alive and of not knowing where, where is my life going? I, I don't know what direction it's going. I've lost the direction. I don't know, I don't know what it's about. I can't find the center of life anymore. I'm just sort of off on the edges and I, I don't know where my life is going. And then we fall in love somehow. We fall in love with God. Once again, we come here once again and we fall in love with God. Or we fall in love with someone who's coming into our lives or we fall in love with learning and we want to go to the university and we want to get a degree and learn. Or we fall in love with truth or goodness or beauty. And all of a sudden, we know what the direction of life is now. We have found the direction. It was lost, but now we found it. And our life's going in that direction. And now we are charged up with the energy to go in that direction. That's what it is to be in love. And you've heard me say this, and I'll probably say it a thousand times in the time that I've here, is that we are already in love with God. That's the first gift that God gives to all people, is a heart that is in love with God challenge is to discover that we're in love and to start cooperating with it to start cooperating with being in love with God because as Jesus says in the gospel learn the lesson of the fig tree something is coming you can see it coming and there is no time left for just drifting through life and just drifting without knowing what our love is about and where, where the direction of our love is going, where we need to be charged up with the energy to do good for humanity. We, we talk about loving people and one of the things that we skip a lot of times is that Jesus obviously loved people and loves each of us, but Jesus also loved humanity. He died also for everyone. We need to have a love that charges us up to do good for the world, for all human beings. And so we are made to be in love. It's, it's incredibly obvious and clear that the way God made us is that we were made to be in love. And so let us come then to this altar, to this table this morning. And let's ask God to show us where it is. What are we in love with? What is our life to be in love about? Where is that direction that our love pulling and tugging at us? Where is that drive? Where is that drive that charges us up to do good? Because Jesus makes it very clear. Triumphs of trouble are coming times of great trouble, we're already in troubled times. And Jesus makes it clear there's even more difficult times of trouble coming. And he makes it really clear, there is no time left. There is no time left to just be drifting through life, unattached to our love, to being in love with God, to being in love with our families, to be in love with humanity, to be in love with that person that God has shown to us. 
It doesn't take very long when you're a priest and you see couples once again come into your office and they want to get married. And they, uh, it doesn't take too long to talk to them sometimes. And you can tell that one of them has a battery that's charged up. Their battery is all charged up. And one's got a dead battery. And, the, and I hate to say it, but in my experience, it's more often the guy than the woman. His battery's dead. But he's got jumper cables on the battery of the woman. And he's charging up. He's open to get a jump start off the energy of her life because he doesn't have any. Because he's drifting and he's out of touch with his love. And he wants to jump start off of somebody who is in touch with their love who's got some energy for life and love. And he's draining the energy off of her battery because he's just drifting, he's just drifting. And Jesus makes it utterly clear there was no time left for just drifting. So let's come here to this altar, to this table, and let's receive sacred food so that we can live holy lives. And let's begin the search. Let's ask God to make it clear to us what we are to be in love with in our lives. Charge us up with the energy to do good. Because it is too late in this world to be just drifting around.